as a means of achieving a transition from Honda's FF front engine slash front wheel drive vehicle type to another format. The WACO R&D Center began conducting basic research on a new drive system in January 1984. In those days, FF was the most common option for Honda vehicles, and Honda models used it to provide superior interior comfort and space. The NSX, September 1990, the design team, on the other hand, thought that changing the drive format could make frame design and packaging more adaptable. As a result, the research's primary focus was on an underfloor, midship engine rear-wheel drive UMR, configuration. This could combine the sporting characteristics that were associated with rear drive with greater packaging efficiency. Numerous obstacles stood in the way of the change's potential. It was Honda's first attempt at designing a vehicle with the engine in the rear. In light of this, and in order to speed up their research, the development team built a UMR test vehicle out of a city from the first generation in February of the same year. The members of the team were amazed by the car's unique handling during the test drive, which was significantly different from the original FF specification. In point of fact, the UMR version city exhibited superior performance characteristics. Unfortunately, further development was necessary because Honda's technology at the time limited the car's ability to offer any real advantage over the standard FF version. However, despite the fact that the project was put on hold, the members of the team simply could not forget how thrilling the UMR experiment had been for them. Also, remarks had been raised by allies at the assessment gatherings that the back drive city's dynamic presentation ought to some way or another be reproduced. As a result, the focus of the research shifted from drive format to dynamic performance, which is typically achieved with a sports car's lower center of gravity. Shigeru Uehara, who was working on the project as LPL, said, It's the dream of every development engineer to create a sports car. Individuals who proposed altering the examination course at the assessment gatherings should likewise have had that fantasy. In 1983, a new step was taken. A prototype car made from a CRX was built to test dynamic performance from different angles. Additionally, this was the year that Honda made the much-anticipated return to the F1 series. Consequently, obviously, spirits were high at the research and development center, fully expecting the likelihood that Honda could for sure form sports goods. With its large-scale manufacturing FF models and F1 vehicles, Uehara reviewed. They required a vehicle that would serve as Honda's new face. Additionally, individuals planning the Acura division at American Honda had repeatedly contacted us regarding similar requests. When the development of a new sports car began in earnest in the fall of 1985, Honda's development engineers finally found a way to express their passions. A sketch of the exterior of the NSX, which has a sleek profile that is inspired by an F-16 fighter jet. A sports car as a representation of Honda. What specific characteristics would a sports car possess as a representation of the Honda name? This was a definitive inquiry confronting the improvement group, and they over and over took part in significant conversations in the expectation of tracking down a response. They eventually began to define keywords in the development of their new car, codenamed the NSX. Once their direction had been determined through the use of a conceptual diagram, the outline was a method for addressing power-to-weight proportion, running execution, along the Y-hub and wheelbase-to-weight proportion, turning and halting execution, along the X-hub in clear, open terms. Additionally, when data from competing models were plotted directly over the diagram, a latitude region that was as large as the Milky Way emerged. The diagram was also known as the Milky Way diagram due to its shape. It was the subject of numerous discussions until the development team reached its conclusion. On the Milky Way a diagram, data from competing models was plotted with the power-to-weight ratio, running performance equals vehicle weight slash engine output on the y-axis and the wheelbase-to-weight ratio, turning and stopping performance equals vehicle weight slash wheelbase on the x-axis. The goal of the NSX was to get as close to the F1 machine as possible while remaining outside of the traditional sports car category. 
We require a car in the middle of the market that has superior performance but also needs equally superior driving skills to be controlled. The car's dynamic performance that has superior performance but also needs equally superior driving skills to be controlled. The car's dynamic performance can then be maximized to an extent that is as close as possible to that of an F-1 aircraft. However, it was abundantly clear that excessive dynamic performance could compromise cabin space and make the vehicle difficult to control. That was simply unacceptable to Honda, whose... However, it was abundantly clear that excessive dynamic performance could compromise cabin space and make the vehicle difficult to control. That was simply unacceptable to Honda, whose primary goal in manufacturing automobiles and motorcycles was passenger and driver comfort. The assurance of human compatibility, in which the driver could operate the machine as desired, and the vehicle's excellent adaptability to various road conditions, were Honda's only requirements for higher dynamic performance. To make a sports car for another period, we ought to adjust human sentiments and vehicle execution at more elevated levels. As a result, that car will represent the value of Honda, a benefit that nobody else can give you. The development team agreed that this should be the design for their new vehicle. Midway through 1986, the team completed designing an all-aluminum, monocoque body prototype I, which was the team's first construction using the Milky Way diagram. At this stage, they were thinking about both sheet steel and aluminum as potential body materials. Steel sheet was less popular because it would make it harder to achieve the target running performance of a mid-range F1 class car. Additionally, a larger, more powerful engine would be required to offset the added weight, taking the vehicle completely out of the mid-range range. Sheet steel would likewise be an obligation as far as the vehicle's motivation, which was to part from the customary picture of a sports car as a split the difference in solace and well-being for prevalent slalom measurements. Naturally, the team intended to equip the vehicle with cutting-edge features like traction control, full automatic air conditioning, power windows, and ABS systems. However, the vehicle's weight would need to be reduced to achieve this. As a result, it was decided that the NSX would have the first monocoque body made entirely of aluminum. The world's most memorable large-scale manufacturing vehicle to offer an all-aluminum, monocoque body. Despite the fact that aluminum is free of pollution and readily available, no other automaker had yet produced a vehicle primarily made of the material. Aluminum is said to have three times as many estimated reserves as iron among the mineral resources. Additionally, aluminum is resistant to corrosion, has a specific gravity that is one-third that of iron, and is much simpler to recycle. The material has a number of disadvantages, the most notable of which are its high cost and proportionately higher technical requirements for molding and welding. However, the requirement to construct a separate plant solely to produce the car's aluminum body was the development team's greatest obstacle. The undertaking expected that the improvement group make continuous outings between the research and development focuses at Tachijai and Wako. They found out that the bullet train itself was made of aluminum on one of these trips when they were on the Shinkansen. In fact, aluminum has demonstrated remarkable adaptability to the Shinkansen. As a result, the members of the team saw no reason why it couldn't be used to make a sports car's body. And despite the possibility of encountering difficulties along the way, they promised at the time that they would not shy away from the challenge of developing a car for the new era. When the development team asked Kobe Steel and other material suppliers to collaborate on the creation of an all-aluminum car body, they appeared somewhat perplexed. Aluminum was only used in a small number of parts for mass-produced automobiles because it is difficult to weld and prone to buckling during stamping. The providers were befuddled by the group's choice to make the whole body out of aluminum and questioned the reality of Honda's aims. However, the staff's sincere explanation to the doubters was that their new sports car needed an aluminum body. It was the sort of fair excitement that in the end drove the providers to ponder, same difference either way. The suppliers selected the 5000 and 6000 series of aluminum after considering a variety of options. 
The first was already being used in the automotive industry, and despite its lower formability, the second had a relatively high strength. Nevertheless, a number of enhancements would be required. The development team at the supply company was frustrated with the situation for many days, and worked frantically to meet Honda's requirements for stamping, forming, welding, coating, and other processes to ensure productivity. In point of fact, the hours were so long and tiring toward the end of development that they frequently stayed overnight in their factory. As a result of the inevitable occurrence of issues, delays, and headaches followed. Processing the side sill, in particular, was challenging due to the fact that aluminum, in contrast to iron, was not suitable for deeply drawn press work. Thusly, a new framing process was concocted by which the aluminum was warmed to 600 degrees, filled kicks the bucket, and expelled from the passes on while it was being drawn. However, this framework made a super solid, exceptionally inflexible honeycomb edge, and this procedure at last turned into the confirmation that their all-aluminum body would fulfill the afflictions of elite execution on the open street. In the end, the vehicle had five different aluminum alloys in it. In comparison to a car with a steel body, this meticulous attention to detail and numerous other efforts soon resulted in a body weight reduction of 140 kilograms and a weight reduction of nearly 200 kilograms for the entire vehicle. It was all in all an accomplishment according to the material providers, who were stunned to see exactly the amount of a vehicle could be made with aluminum. In the middle of 1986, the development team worked with the Suzuka factory to build a prototype CRX with an aluminum body. Performance tests were done on the prototype, and the results and issues they found were looked at to see if it would be possible to make a car with an aluminum body. Then, the group concentrated on the fundamental casing design of an aluminum body for a midship sports car utilizing Model I. A few test drives and crash tests were completed utilizing the model, to get careful confirmations covering everything from inflexibility to fixed procedures. Prototype 2, which was much closer to the finished product, reflected the results. Interior accessories, equipment, passenger comfort and the car's adaptability to changing environments were all taken into account when developing Prototype 2.